Hello. Let's see now why caches work, which is the principle of locality. So why do caches work? There's something in programs called locality, which says that they tend to use data and instructions that are either nearby in space, they're close by, addresses are close by, or they tend to be, um, we tend to reuse data, the same data over and over again. So this is called locality because it, it tends to stay close by either in space or in time. Okay? So we have two types of locality. One is called temporal locality that says that data items that were referenced uh, recently are likely to be referenced again in the near future. So if you get a, a, a given uh, data in a, in a block here, a given piece of data that's stored in your, uh, that, that is accessed by your program, you tend to access it over and over again uh, in time. Okay? Then there's another thing called spatial locality that says that if you have a piece of data that you're interested in, it's likely that you're also going to, de uh, you're also going to need a piece of data that, um, that happens to be located very nearby in the address space. Okay. So how do caches take advantage of uh, temporal locality? Well, just by, by storing res, uh, recently accessed data, you take advantage of temporal locality. Okay. But now, how, how do caches take advantage of spatial locality? They take advantage of spatial locality by bringing entire blocks of data from memory as opposed to a single byte at a time. So essentially, if you need, say, address A, when you go to the cache, you're not only going to get A, but you're also going to get A plus 1, a plus 2, and so on, up, uh, up to a certain limit. So let's see an example of a program that has locality. Suppose you have this loop here, and this loop is uh, iterating over array A and adding it to the sum variable. Where is locality here? Where's locality, locality here? Let's start with data. Well, so with data, the variable sum is referenced multiple times. Okay? We, ask, we ask over and over again here inside our loop. Each iteration of the loop reads it and writes it. It reads it because you're doing sum equals sum plus A of I. Now, we also have spatial locality because we're accessing array A and all of its elements. So if you have memory here, so we're going to have here A of A, and then right next to it, we're going to have A of 1, and then we're going to have A of two and so on. They're all nearby in memory. So since they're close by, we can we can take advantage of spatial locality. So the other um, type of locality that we have here is instruction locality. Okay, so we have instructions. Well, remember that instructions are just stored in memory. That means the processors have to read them, right? And since we tend to read one instruction after the other, right? Instructions and that means that we already have spatial locality right off the bat because you know we read we read references we, we read instructions in the sequence that they appear in the program okay so when you have uh, a series of instructions one after the other in your program they're going to reside close by in memory right next to each other so when you bring one you might as well just bring a few instructions ahead as well okay and we also have temporal locality because we have things like loops since this loop here is just executing its body over and over and over and over again if we have a cache that stores the code for the body of the loop, it's going to be very effective, right? Because instead of going to memory every time you execute a body of the loop, you can just go to the cache and, um, and get the data, okay? So um, it's very important to uh, be able to assess locality of your program effectively because it will help you lay out data in memory in a way uh, that's more effective for cache, that makes caches more effective for your program. Okay, so if you know that there's a certain way of accessing your data structure such that it can take advantage of spatial locality, you should definitely do it because it is going to make your program faster. And same way, if there's, if there's a way of writing your program that uh, increases uh, the possibility of taking advantage of temporal locality, it's also very important. So let me give you an example here. Suppose I have this uh, piece of code here. It's a, it, it receives uh, an array a three-dimensional array, okay, a three-dimensional matrix as, um, as a parameter. And then we're trading over the entire array. So that's why we have three loops, okay? One loop that varies i, which is one of the index here. The other one varies j, which is this index here. And then another one that varies k, which is this, this index here, okay? And the way um, C lays out uh, matrices in memory is just by putting an entire row at a time, okay? 
But since this program here is not accessing all of the elements of a row before moving to the next one, right? So since you see the, the inner loop here is varying the outermost dimension, now we're just going all over memory. Instead of reading memory one after the other here, we're going to read one place, another place, another place, another place. It's just not going to take advantage of locality, especially if the matrix does not fit in cache. Okay? I know this was quick, but we're going to show you uh, another example later on as we teach you more about caches. It's going to make this make sense. This is mainly to show you that if you, ha you have to pay attention to your code uh, to understand how we can take advantage of locality and whether you might ha be having performance issues because of that. Okay? So what's wrong with this code is that we're accessing it out of order. So how, how can we fix it? Well, we should first loop through the last dimension, then the middle dimension, then the first dimension, because we access, uh, um, we access data in a way that, um, that follows how it's laid out in memory. Okay? See you soon.